Hello, everybody. This is Kate Strashny from Dedicated. Welcome to the Dedicated Show. Today, I'm hosting a conversation where we're going to talk all about KPIs, key performance indicators. And my guest is Lior Gerson. He's the CEO of Target Board. I'm going to go ahead and bring him up on stage right now. Lior, welcome to the Dedicated Show. Hi, Kate. Big fan. Really happy to be here. I'm so excited to chat with you. I think a good place for us to start uh, is what is a KPI and why is it important? So I think, you know, KPIs are underappreciated in a lot of companies because at the end of the day, what you're actually doing is you're defining success. What does success look like and why it's important and how are you tracking towards your goals? And if companies don't have that, it's very easy to be led astray and to miss your targets. So why do you think companies struggle? It seems like KPIs are important. People understand they're important. We need KPIs. We need to know, like you said, what success looks like. Why do companies struggle to put those really good KPIs in place? So it's a great question. It's very counterintuitive. Most companies struggle either because of culture or because of capabilities. So what you'll see is you'll see many managers, they don't actually want to have KPIs in place. They don't want to have additional accountability and transparency across their work. They don't want to have that oversight, that commitment to what they want to achieve, right? And on the other hand, you see customers and you see companies that really want KPIs, but the overhead of dealing with the data and everything that entails is prohibitive and they can't get around to it. It's like something they always want to have, it's something they feel they need to have, but it's still like 50 years ago where the technology is not there to make it easy and accessible. Yeah, I think if you're a good leader, a good manager, you probably would want KPIs. This way you're showcasing all the good things that you're accomplishing. But I can see where in some cases people don't want their progress to be tracked, especially if it's something slightly outside of their control and then they're being measured on it. So that makes sense. It's much more common than you think. Like you see your protagonist managers that really want to sort of make the world better, make the company better, show that they're improving, empower their teams. And they really push for these things. And you see others that just want to hang around, stick to their seats, and they don't really care. And, and then they become, you know, they can become toxic. They can become um, blockers for initiatives to make the company better, right? Because they don't want the company to improve. It's going to make them work harder. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's true. Well, so let's go to the leaders who want KPIs, right? Um, and when they're in their companies, they're trying to set KPIs. What are some of the mistakes that you're seeing organizations make on this journey? So I think one thing is that a lot of the times companies will delay and it it could be like a naive delay, right? They want, um, wider buy-in because they don't want to put their necks out and, um, they'll try and focus on your KPIs, like vanity KPIs that don't really make a difference to the business that are easier to achieve that don't move the needle. Right. And I think where companies sort of fall short is if they're thinking about KPIs as these metrics that need to be there, where in fact, the way to think about it is that this is how you measure success. You can measure success at your team level, your department level, your company level, but you need to have a measurement and alignment on what you're trying to achieve, what the planning, what the strategy is, what the story is that you're telling to your team, to your investors, to your peers. And when you don't commit to that, when you don't say, hey, this is what I want to do, then it's not going to happen. All right. So quick question for people who maybe need an example, who are following along and listening here. What is an example of a good KPI versus something that a company might be tracking just for the sake of tracking, because it might be an easy thing to track? So take, for example, um, email sent in marketing. Right? You could be sending a lot of emails, but they could be going to the wrong people and they could be ineffective. So you could be spending a lot on your email marketing. You could have a team of email marketeers and they're not going to do anything for the business. It's not going to generate a single new customer. That's actually a really good point. I know a lot of marketers who boast and say, oh, I have 100,000 subscribers to my email list. And then they track that number. Now it's 150,000. Okay, what's your open rate? And what's your click through rate? Things. It's all over the place. You can be tracking lines of code. Yeah. Nobody cares about lines of code. It's all written by AI today. Like I could be writing lines of code and telling that my prompt to generate as many lines of code to add two plus two. Yes. And I've never done my KPIs. 
I love that example. So would you say it's good enough for a company, let's say they have good KPIs, is it good Is it good enough for them to just track the KPIs or do they need to do something else? Well, it's a start. And a lot of companies don't get to that start. But I think it's important to first make sure your KPIs are relevant, they're up to date, they're meaningful for the business, they have an impact, and that you keep updating them as time goes by. Because as, you know, quarter over quarter, things change. One time you're, um, you care about quality, another time you, you care about velocity. You have, might have different issues with different parts of the company, which you want to improve. And you might need to make sure that everybody is focused on whatever they need to do to make mm -hmm. sure that the business outcome uh, are realized. By the way, OKRs do a very good job of, of sort of doing that top-down analysis of what needs to happen in the business uh, for it to succeed. They have other shortfalls like having like tunnel vision and, and not, not taking into consideration what needs to happen for the, the ship to stay above water. But in general, it's a very good start. I think it's also really important to make sure that you understand your KPIs. What are their movers? What are their shakers? What makes an impact on these KPIs so that you know how to change them, how to improve them, how to set your KPIs up for success? Mm -hmm. I agree. So back in my one of my prior roles, we used to set different KPIs for management, right? And a lot of times they would see the dashboards and, you know, lots of the metrics and they would question it. They wouldn't really trust the numbers because let's say they were used to tracking it in a certain different method or they did like pen and paper. Would you say these days executives actually trust the KPIs that the data, the tech teams put in front of them? I think it all goes back to culture. You'll see great managers that understand their data, they understand their KPIs. They make sure that they have data that they can trust and that they can communicate and they can explain why it's important. And then you'll see managers that, you know, will make decisions based on gut feeling and find whatever data they need to justify it. And again, it comes back to how hard it is to get the data that you need. You're, when you're in a large organization, it's all over the place. It's all messy. It's very hard to get it to a place where it makes sense and people can align on the definitions, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think a lot of times, even within, like you said, within that same company, it doesn't even have to be a big company. Sometimes just one department versus another um, want to call something, something different. They have different names for things. They track different KPIs. They, they care about different KPIs, which leads me to my next question of selecting KPIs. Do you think it's necessary for organizations to have steering committees where they actually get together and select KPIs? Or do you think anyone can come up with a KPI? Do they need to be a certain level in a company? Share your thoughts on that. I don't think committees work for a lot of reasons. And I don't think that your definition of success should be a compromise. It should be a strategic, deliberate decision on what needs to happen for the business to realize your goals, for the business to get better, for it to become more efficient, for it to reduce costs, for it to increase revenue. And I think that steering committees are a delay tactic. Mm -hmm. So when you're not sure, we don't feel comfortable defining how you want to measure success, what success looks like, then you put a committee in place and you'll wait for a month or two months or a year for it to decide what needs to happen. Then you'll build a team. It'll take another year until you actually have the data. And by the time you start seeing the results, you're actually moved on to your next job. So the other thing I want to talk about is KPI regret. I think many companies have been there. They not only with KPIs, but also reports and dashboards, right? We put so much effort into generating things that we think our audience is going to care about. We spend months building reports. And then a lot of times um, the KPI or, or report is not used, or maybe you created it for this one specific need, but then all this effort is staying on there to continue, you know, making it fresh and uploading new data and no one's using it. So how do we address that issue? I want to take it a step back. When companies think about reporting, analytics, measurement, right? They don't think about the fact that they're hiring BI developers. These are developers. You pay them like any other developers. Your BI project is a development project of a custom product that you're building in-house. And that means you have to keep maintaining it, you have to keep developing it, you have to keep updating it. It takes people, it takes time, it takes tools. So instead of building your business, you're building a custom internal product. You're just calling it reporting. But there's no reason for a company to invest that much resources. And sometimes it could be like teams of 50 or 100 
or 200 people just building those reporting and trying to align all those data sources. And it's, it's the thing, like all the company needs is these KPIs, which everybody else has. Like what's my top line, bottom line, how much I'm doing here, how much I'm doing there. You're not reinventing the wheel. There's no reason to build it as a fully customized product. Right. I agree. And again, this brings me back to when we used to build dashboards and reports and track all these metrics um, because somebody senior asked for it. And what we started doing is after a few months, we would go in because the, the tool we used, you're able to see how many times was this report looked at by you know anybody. And once we saw that data, like, okay, this report was viewed once, a, you know, last year. And then you have this whole team of people pulling data, cleaning data, prepping data, visualizing it, making sure everything looks perfect. Yeah, sometimes you have to see, is anyone actually looking at this thing? So Exactly. The way to, yeah. to measure the ROI on this is to think about every new report that your BI team is building as a custom feature for a custom product that you're paying for. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And probably and nobody's going to use. Yeah. And just because like these days, it's a little bit easier to um, visualize data and analyze data. Just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? Sometimes we're like, oh, it's easy to just add another KPI. And now you have a thousand KPIs you're monitoring and you only care about five and it, it gets lost in the noise, right? Yeah. You get dashboard hell and um, yeah. Yeah. So you're wearing a cool shirt. It says Target Board. Let's talk about this. Um, you're the CEO of Target Board. What do you guys do? And tell us a story about why you started it. So we started Target Board because we were sick of building the same BI over and over again for the same type of companies, right? Um, and then waiting for answers. And every time we, we needed a new report and waiting for people to build it. And after doing that for many, many times, we said, well, we, we get how it, it just works and let's put a solution that solves this end to end. So we started Target Board and Target Board is an end to end solution, right? You don't need any other tool. You don't need any other person in the loop. We will do the full BI analytics process for you out of the box in minutes, right? So pulling in your data, cleaning it, fixing it, combining it, building your data warehouse, your semantic layer, your governance layer, your reporting layer, your analytics layer, everything you need, you need from A to Z to get all the reports, all the insight that you need to run your business, to get all the KPIs that you would care for for your business without you having to do a steering committee or decide how they're defined or think about what you need to track. All of that is done for you. That sounds really good. It sounds too good to be true. And in fact, on your website, it says target board sets up in one day. And I wanted to just follow up on that one. What actually happens during that day? And is it really just one day? So everything I described happens on that day. Wow. Um, when you, when you onboard, you get like this, the short survey that sort of, uh, helps us understand how you work, how your processes are, what's your different definitions, for example, for planning, definition of lead of SQL of MQL. Right. And then the, the platform is so smart that it knows and understands how you work mm -hmm. and is able to understand your data and combine it and mesh it together. So that you get fully trustworthy and accurate data immediately. Okay. So how long does it take someone to fill out that survey? Like five minutes. Oh, okay. I thought it'd be a few hours based on all the data. Okay. Interesting. You also mentioned that you offer 200 KPIs right away. That's a lot of KPIs. So I wanted to ask, how do you make sure that these fit each team without doing months of custom work for them? So going back to everybody billing and needing the same KPIs, every industry, every vertical sales, marketing, uh, engineering support, they have standard KPIs today, right? Yeah. If you go to any system, you go to Salesforce, you go to HubSpot, you go to Zendesk, you see the same type of KPIs. It's all about being able to bring in the context of the company, of the business, to those reports and making sure they're accurate. So the way we have our system built is that we have many, many hundreds of templates of KPIs that we are able to automatically adjust to the way that the business operates. So you don't need to consider and think about which KPIs you need, what you should be tracking. When you come in, everything is laid out there in front of you. You're able to see all your metrics and get immediate insights on, hey, this is working for me, this is not working for me. Maybe I should focus here or there and sort of bring that into the story and really build a story that you're trying to tell yourself. You're trying to tell your managers, your teams. It's all seamless. It's hassle-free. So you start with the 200 that they can, I guess, like more of a template um, that they can adapt to with their context. 
can they also add custom KPIs? Because I'm assuming some companies will just say, no, I'm tracking this very specific thing. Are you able to customize that for them? Absolutely. Everything is customizable. It's DIY. Um, we'll also help you do that if, if you need help. Mm -hmm. We've seen sort of metric definitions that internal BI teams took months to implement. And we were able to provide like a parity to our customers, like an hour. Okay. Wow. That's really quick. And I know everyone these days is talking about AI. We can't not have this conversation and you built target board to feed AI good data. What does this actually mean? So if you think about MCP in general, right, you have data in a lot of systems, but LLMs are not really good with understanding structured data and understanding questions about that and then sort of running queries and so on. And if you give them access to systems like Salesforce, then it's very hard to rely and depend on, on that data because you don't really know what the AI is doing in the background. What we do is that we take all the data, we process it, we combine it, we fix it. You know that you're getting back dependable results, that mm -hmm. it's accurate, it's trustworthy. It goes through all the governance layers that are required for you to have like one place that gives you very high quality and accurate results from other systems. And I wanted to ask what kind of customers are using target board for this today? So today we're seeing engineering teams we're seeing customer support teams, RevOps teams, and usually it's sort of director level and above. So people who need that level of accountability, who want to create accountability in their teams, in their business, they want to tell the story, right? So we usually actually don't get founders. Founders feel very comfortable in their position. But we do get a lot of professional executives that say, hey, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of complicated data here and I have a complicated job. And that complicated job requires complicated data and I need help telling my story. And that's where we really come in and help them get everything together, make sense of what's happening in their organization at any level and, and help them tell that story, mm -hmm. help them the team and so on. So do you yourself at Target Board use Target Board for KPIs? We do. And what, what sort of KPIs do you track? What are the top few? So we're, we're still small, but we use it for our sales. We use it for our marketing. We use it for our customer support. I, I like that. It's always a good sign, as they say, when companies eat their own dog food, right? It's like if you're yeah. using your own tool. Oh, great. Well, Leo, our final question to you is where can my audience go to learn more? So we learn a lot all the time from all the companies we're working with. Everything we learn, we share on our LinkedIn account, and that's mm -hmm. a best place to, to find us. Great, well, I encourage my whole audience to go ahead and follow you, Leo Gerson, and Target Board on LinkedIn. Thank you so much for your time here today. 